So we are at our last problem, and I am working with a mystery material. It has, this is the shear modulus. I'm assuming it's linear isotropic elastic, so I can reuse this equation, two, one plus nu. Um, so, and that equals 39 GPA. Um, so the material was initially, so basically if I look at my one, two, and three direction, it was rotated um, basically 37 degrees counterclockwise, three, two, around the two axis. So basically my new three prime was like this, and then again my one prime was like this, you know, something of that nature. Um, but we were able to measure some stress and strain values, again, in this rotated state. So basically these values are my uh, basically epsilon one one primes, effectively. So I have the following values, so I'm going to clear everything here. Valuation, quit kernel local, quit everything, but I do need my, let's look at our, let's go ahead and get our T, matrix, and all these other good things. All right, we'll come back to those later. Now, I've got, uh, so in my prime state, so I'm going to say new strain equals, I have E11, which is 0 0.00. 38105 um, E33 is minus 0.001041 and then my gamma I don't want gamma I want epsilon so I'm going to divide this by minus 0 0.0011 so that's my new strain and luckily I don't measure any other strain values I do have another stress value as well so in my um, original coordinate system here I have you know, that values of stress. So I have plain stress here. So I am going to assume that we have basically plain strain, uh, plain strain as well. Um, so let's go ahead and let's work out the rest of this problem. So I've given this new strain. So I'm in plain strain states. So I am going to now uh, basically try to solve for some other values. So um, I can get my old strain state as follows. So I could do um, t dot new strain slash dot so I rotated 37 degrees counterclockwise so if I rotate back theta goes to um, basically minus 37 degrees I could get my old strain because I have only those strain values so I've got this values right here so I've got my new strain and I've got my old strain all of them complete and those are done so that's fantastic um, so I've actually answered this question so I've got the strain tensors for the original coordinate system. I now need my, um, actually, I've already got the strain tensor as well. So I don't, need, I don't need that. So that's already given to me, but I have found it. Now I need my stress tensors for the original coordinate system and for my old coordinate system. Now, I don't know what my material is, but I'm assuming, or actually, I mean, we're in plain stress state. So I am going to write out my S, um, basically matrix, so my S, so S is equal to, what is S defined as? My big S is going to be equal to 1 over Y, uh, and then minus nu divided by Y, 0. I'm going to also assume that we have minus nu divided by Y, Y, or 1 over Y, excuse me, and then 0. And then finally, we have 0, 0, and then basically 1 plus nu, nu divided by Y. So that is my S, S in matrix form. So that's gonna allow me to convert from my old strain to my, or my old stress, or my strain to here. Now, I do have my old strain, but I don't have, I, can't, I don't have my material property, so I, I can't kind of convert those. But in my strain, my stress, I do have, so I have sigma one one and sigma three three and sigma one three. I do have this value. So I do have one equation to kind of relate to it right here. So I also have this equation that in my new coordinate system, I could just do simply t dot s dot inverse t to the minus one times my stress in my new coordinate system, where that new coordinate system rotation, again, this theta would be 37 degrees. So I also don't know what are my, I don't know what my sigma one one prime, my sigma three three prime. I don't know my sigma one three prime either. So I have three unknowns here. 
I also have two more unknowns here, and I also don't know what is my E and my new. So what am I? What the heck am I going to do? Well, I do know all these values. So I have three values here, and I could use to solve for these three equations. I also have this equation right here. So three plus one, and I also have this relationship where I can get from my old strain, or actually, this is basically. I can get my old strain from t inverse 1 times sigma prime. Um, so I could use, again, this relationship to figure out, again, for this single equation. So I have 1, 2, this equation right here, and then uh, basically 5. So 5 equations for 5 unknowns. Let's start to try to solve. So let's get at it. So I'm going to do um, basically my t dot s dot inverse inverse t and then my sig 1 1 p or dot this dot my sig sig 1 1 p uh, my sig 2 my sig 3 3 p my sig 1 3 p so I need to solve so solve when my new strain and that's what we were given here so my new strain set equal to this and this whole thing is where slash dot theta goes to uh, basically 37. 37 here. And now let's go ahead. So that's one equation. <laughs> or actually, that's three equations essentially here. So three equations here. Then I need to also solve. I have the equation where my, where's my, you know, my, Shear modulus is 39 times 10 to the 9. So this equal to y divided by um, basically 2 times 1 plus nu. So I could solve for that as well. So that's another equation. And then I have uh, basically inverse of t dot um, basically into my to this. And this, and then I'm looking for the uh, basically when slash dot theta goes to 37, because again counterclockwise, and I want the second equation here, <laughs> um, and then that's going to be also equal to minus 119 times 10 to the 6 mp. So I believe, mercifully, thankfully, that is it. And then let's see if it allows me to solve for my sig 1 1 p, sig 3 3 p, sig 1 3 p, sig 1 3 p, my y and my new for reals. And what do you know? We got it. So this is fantastic. So I've got my sig 1 1 p, my sig 3 3 p, I've got my sig 1 3p, I've got my y, which is about basically 100 gigapascals, my new is around 0.3, it's a metal. <laughs> I feel like it's a son or it's a child. Uh, <laughs> my life is very sad. So my new stress is equal to this right here. So that's sig 1 1, that's sig 3 3, and then that is sig 1 3. So there we go. And then my old stress will simply be t dot, or actually do inverse, t dot new stress slash dot theta goes to uh, 37. You could see that I could also just do new stress, and actually see I got the same value here, so that's always good, 119 megapascals. I could also just, I could have just done this t dot new stress slash dot theta goes to minus 37 and same thing so that's always a good double check so i've got my old stress i got my new stress i'm not stressed at all because i figured out this problem so i've got this i've got this but rotation will give a full, full 3d principal stress state i am i am essentially or i am kind of basically there actually not really there um so now um Confirm with the rotation for both stress and strain. So 
I could actually just work with either old stress or new stress. It doesn't matter. Um, so let's go ahead and work with from old stress. So my old stress, so old stress looks like this. So my full OS, my full old stress will just be simply this. So I've got my sigma of one one, and then zero, and then uh, this is sigma one three. So there, and I got zero zero zero, and then finally uh, this was one three, yeah, one three, uh, and then basically this again. So zero, and then finally this sigma three three. So I can look at full OS uh, matrix form. So if I now do um, eigenvalues of full OS, would be that, and then eigenvectors full OS. I could also do you know and get those values. See the rotation again that will allow me. What will get you know give me that uh, value? Uh, so that is full old stress. I could also look at new stress too. New stress. Oops. So new stress. So f full ns equals again similar thing. One one zero. Then my one three. Zero zero zero, and then. This guy again, zero, and then finally up here, and there, full NS. So I can do full NS, this is my matrix form. So let's see if the eigenvalues are the same. So eigenvalues, uh, full NS. What do you know? That's a good check. Eigenvectors, uh, full NS. Again, a little bit different rotation, you know, uh, you know, a uh, little bit different state, but we got those values. Still the same vectors here, and that will be the rotation from that state. Fantastic! So I could also do again the same that the same thing and um, for my strain state as well. So if I do old strain, so I could do full. Actually, I I do have the full NS already, so I could do. Um, eigenvalues, full NS, and then eigenvectors. What is that? Oh no, that's that's full new. Uh, that's not. I don't have my full uh, my full screen. So let me look at. Got too excited. So that's my old screen. So my full uh, O screen equals again screen one one zero. Here's the screen here here. Zero, 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 and then uh, let me pull this one out here again. Just three, one, one, three. You need to be symmetric, and then finally this right here. Then got it. So I could do eigen values. Full S, full S string, full O string, eigen vectors. There, and I could do the same thing again. New string. So, full end string is going to be here. This is here. This is right here. And this is right here. Let's put this one right below. In screen, same values, fantastic. Eigenvectors will be different because, again, I'm looking at a different rotation, but it's here. And voila, we got it. So that is it. So actually, you can see that they, let's see, eigenvectors full OS. You can see that they match here. See, it's in the same, it's the rotation state. This is a fantastic, I love this problem. <laughs> <laughs> I did very well. And you will too. So you know how to solve for these. Stick with your equations. What are my knowns? What are my unknowns? What are my rotations? Double check your answers. Show off your work and do fantastic on this exam.
Thank you, and I'll see you uh, on exam day. Great luck.